service here from the Lake Tarpon Church of Christ. Our study this evening will be coming from the book of Acts chapter 20 verse number 7. The book of Acts chapter 20 verse number 7. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father we thank you so much for giving us another day. Lord we praise you for this day. We thank you for this day. Thank you for the air you allow us to breathe. Thank you for the food you provide us, the clothes on our backs, the shelters over our heads, the money allowed to be in our accounts and our possession. Thank you for supplying all of our needs to your riches and glory and giving us all that we desire in your perfect time within our hearts. Father, we pray you forgive us for any sin that may be within our lives, knowingly or unknowingly, with a thought, word, or deed. We worship you and praise you in spirit and in truth. You are Lord of Lord and King of Kings. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Lord, you deserve to be worshiped and praised for all that you have done, even sending your only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, that we may come into a relationship with you. Yes. Father, so many things happen in the struggles of life, and we ask that you be with us, Lord God. Give us wisdom and understanding. Lead us in the way that we should go. Help us to not worry about the circumstances, but help us to trust in you, that all things going to, are going to work out to, for our good and your glory. Father, bless our country and nation. Bless all those who are hurting, all those who are growing up in single family homes, those who are being raised by their grandparents. Bless those who are, are struggling, Lord God, financially, struggling to find food and shelter. Be with those who are in the prison, in the county jails. Help them, Lord God. Show them your light, that you can change their lives even in the midst of a dark place. Father, we just pray that your will be done in every situation on earth as it is in heaven. We trust in you. Thank you for our church family, the building we have to worship you in. We know that you're going to allow this church to grow, Father God. I feel it. And help us to prepare for it, Lord God. We pray that as July 10th rapidly approaches, that all kids from everywhere will just come and just have a great time, Lord God. It's not about us converting them, it's about us showing love to others because you show love to us. So Father God, bring the, the kids and bring the parents and let's just have a great time in the Lord. And if some, if one or a couple are willing to come back and worship with us, Lord, we welcome them too. 
But Father, may your will be done as we deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow you. In Christ's name, amen. amen. So we're in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 7. And for anyone who wants to discredit the book of Acts, they're really putting themselves in a bad spiritual position because the book of Acts is where all the churches started in the book of Acts. The church of Ephesus started in the book of Acts. Thessalonica started in the book of Acts. Colossae started from the book of Acts, all because the apostle Paul was sharing his faith with others and helping them to see God's will for their lives. So the book of Acts is very important. We also, in Acts chapter 2, had that great sermon where Peter told them that they killed the Messiah, they crucified the Messiah, so that preaching, and they said, what must we do? And he said, repent, be baptized, every one of you. So the book of Acts is very important. As you go through it, we know that the Apostle Paul had a hard time. You know, he was in prison, he was beaten, he was, he was on a ship, he was, had, it was difficult for him to spread the gospel, but he didn't give up because he knew how important it was for him to follow what God wanted him to do. So we're left with something. If the Apostle Paul endured to the end, we must also endure to the end because God's spirit is in the Apostle Paul the way God's spirit is in us. No, we don't heal the way the Apostle Paul did. He can touch somebody and lay hands on somebody and they be healed. We don't have that healing power the way he did, but we have God's word. We have the testimony of our lives. We have a testimony to show that God does work and the people must trust. But the Apostle Paul and the other disciples in the book of Acts are very encouraging to us. Let's look at verse number seven in Acts chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. So the first day of the week here in the context is Sunday. That's when they got together and that's when they broke bread. Well, we do the same thing on Sunday. We get together, our spiritual family and others, and we, we break bread and we share one another. That's what he did. He broke bread and he was shared a message with them. That's what we do in Acts chapter 20. Starting at verse number seven. So he shared a message. The same message he shared with them was in the form of a scroll. But we're sharing a message with you, and it's in God's word. It's God's book. The same thing they were doing in the first century, we are doing today. Continued his message until midnight. We don't do that. We don't start early in the day and continue all the way to midnight. We wouldn't have nobody left in the pews, right? We wish we would were able to do that, but... That's not what the time calls for now. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. That's how they used to see, not like lights like we have now. They had lamps. And in a window sat a certain young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. We can understand this. Paul is teaching and preaching all night long. So the man's in the window and he starts to doze off. I know, I mean, <laughs> many times I was just sitting in the church and I doze off, you know? I'm falling asleep, tired. Maybe I just ate before I got there. We understand this. But I was never on a third story window falling off. They didn't have windows how we have today. It's like a window ledge. And he fell off and when he fell from three feet up or from the third story, he was taken up dead. Literally, he died. But, verse 10, Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. Remember, the apostle Paul is an apostle. He has different spiritual powers than we would have today. And this is just a testimony of, of how good God is. Now, when he had come up, he had um, broken bread and eaten and talked a, little, a long while, even till daybreak, he departed. And they brought the young man in alive, and they were not a little com comforted, meaning a lot of people comforted him. People try that today. People think that if somebody's dead, that they can wake him up. They can touch him and say, in the name of Jesus, arise and wake. We don't have that power. That's, that's for the apostles, and it went out when the last apostle died, which is the apostle Paul. So it went out with him. 
But we do have the power of God that comes out of our mouth. Yeah. And we have the power to help somebody come out of darkness into light. Really, they're spiritually dead, and God's word through us gives them spiritual life. So we see people every day. And because you see them, and they dress like us, and they talk like us, and they walk like us. Some have haircuts like us, right? I mean, not like you, but like me. But we see these people, we think they're alive. They're not. A lot of them are spiritually dead. Why are they spiritually dead? Because they never accepted Christ. So they're walking dead. But we have the power not to touch them, but to speak a word. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. Jesus is, has a, a, he wants to put his will in your life. Come to Jesus, right? Come to church, come to worship. By you doing that, it's going to waken up a spirit in them. Once they come here, it's up to God's job to take care of that from there. My job is to invite. Your job is to invite. It's God's job to do work. Because they can come here and may not want anything to do with God. Maybe they have a bad time. Maybe they're going through something. Whatever it is. But God could change their life the way he changed our lives. So we have the power to speak life into a dead soul. The Apostle Paul had the power to raise up a dead body. Because it just shows the witness of how good God is. And God is to them. And God is to us. And so they brought the young man in alive. And they were not a little comforted. So a lot of people comforted him. Then we went ahead to the ship and sailed to Assas. They were intending to take Paul on board. For he had given orders intending himself to go on foot. And when he met us at Assas... We took him on the board and came to Mytilene. We sailed from there and the next day came opposite Chios. The following day we arrived at Samos and stayed at Trogilium. The next day we went where we came to Miletus. Look at this. They're traveling. Now let me remind you, they don't have carnival cruise ships. They don't have these ships that have pools on them and jacuzzis on them and clubs on them and restaurants on them. No, no, they were in the bare water. They were in the terrain of the water, the, the bad storms. They didn't have the comfort like we have today. But I remind you, it's all for the gospel. He didn't sit still. He traveled. He traveled here. He traveled there. He stayed here. He stayed there. All for the gospel. And some of us don't want to leave our homes. Some of us don't want to go out and tell someone, Jesus loves you, Jesus has a plan for you. You know why we don't want to do it? Because we're afraid they're going to reject us. Hey, I thought the same thing. And then I read in the Bible where it says they're not rejecting us, they're rejecting God. So now if you reject me, fine, because you're not rejecting me. Really, I do care if you come to Christ, but I'm not going to lose sleep if you don't. I pray that you will, but I'm not going to stay up all night if you don't. Because my job is to invite. It's your job to respond. It's God's job to work. Well, the Bible says one plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. So they traveled, and they traveled all for the gospel. Verse number 16, Acts chapter 20. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus so that he would not have to spend time in Asia for he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. Pente is the 50th day, and Pentecost is where they celebrate the resurrection of Christ. They, they break bread. It's a big festival in Jerusalem. All the people, pilgrims from other areas, they will all travel to Jerusalem during this time to be at Pentecost. Verse number 17. From Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I always lived among you. Now here's his testimony. He's saying that, you know how I lived. I wasn't a hypocrite. I didn't live in a way that wasn't pleasing to God. Listen to what he says. Serving the Lord with all humility. So it tells us that he was a humble man. With many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. Here he is a Christian, but he didn't have an easy Christian life. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house. 
testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, listen to this. Very important. The Jewish people originally had a relationship with God. They're God's chosen people. So God blessed them, right? God said, I'm going to make you fruitful and multiply. Go take over this land, the land of Canaan. Go take over the land. So the Jews were always God's favorite. But the Jews rebelled against God. When they rebelled against God, the Bible says that Paul was sent to the Gentiles that he can bring them in and engraft them in. So the Gentiles had a relationship with God the way the Jews did even though the Jews didn't want the Gentiles to have this relationship. But the Jews thought it was very bad for you to tell us to repent. Who are you to tell me to repent? I have a relationship with God. I'm of Jewish descent. I belong to God. But Paul said, yeah, you may be a Jew, but you have to repent and do what? You have to repent and do what? Repent toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You got to understand something, friends, that what this, what he's saying to them is horrendous in the fact that who crucified Christ? The Jews. Crucify him. Crucify him. So he's saying, yeah, the Jewish religion brought you to faith in God, but Christ is the one to get you to heaven. And you killed him. Now I'm telling you to repent toward God and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't believe the Messiah would come. And they definitely didn't want to believe that they killed the Messiah they've been waiting on for hundreds and hundreds of years. Hey, between the, the Old Testament and the New Testament, it's 400 years. 400 years of silence. They didn't hear from God. And then when the Messiah came, he didn't come in royalty. He didn't come in splendor. He didn't come like Donald Trump came. Donald Trump came in the presidency worth $400 million. He was already rich. He already had everything you could think of. He was already well off. Why do you want to be president? Because, hey, maybe he wanted political power. Who knows? But Jesus came as a humble man. They said in Isaiah, you will look at Jesus and you wouldn't even want to be friends with him. Yeah, the book of Isaiah said you wouldn't even recognize him. He's not the kind of person you say, I want to be friends with him. He looked like everybody else. He came from a poor area. Hey, his family was poor, but he was rich because he's God incarnate. So if a person comes here, not in this church, but say if a person came here, right? Say we all come for money, but then a homeless person walks in and they smell and they look bad and they're dirty. Are we gonna tell that person, hey, come sit up in the front? Come sit right here. That's a good question. If you tell them to come sit up here, that means we welcome them like we welcome anybody else here. That's what God wants us to do. The Jewish people would tell that man, I don't want to touch you because I may be unclean. Remember, they wouldn't go through Samaria, right? They would go around Samaria because Samaria, people in Samaria were called inbreds. Well, they had, they, they were um, intimate with people from other nations and they were defiled. So the Jews would walk around even though going through Samaria was the shortcut. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that the Jews had religious pride. But Paul would tell them to repent. Why can Paul say this? You know why? Because Paul was a, a Hebrew. He was a Jew from the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Pharisee. He knew what it was. Hey, he persecuted Christians before God got his attention. So he's telling everybody to repent. Listen to this in verse 22. And see now, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. I know they're going to persecute me, but I'm still going. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy in the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. I'm gonna stop right there because I, wanna, I, wanna, I don't want to go into the next section in verse number 25 yet. I want us to get this. Sometimes Christians, we wake up and we don't feel good. Sometimes Christians, we wake up and we're just 
emotionally drained, right? We're depressed, we're, we're lonely, we have anxiety, we just don't want to be bothered. Sometimes you wake up, the Apostle Paul was going bound, literally handcuffed, shackled, going to be locked up. He knew this. And he was going to be placed in prison. He knew this. And he's not coming out this time. They're going to kill him in prison. But guess what he said? He's going that he may finish the race of the joy that lays before him. He counted it joy, why? To die for God. Because they can kill the body, but they can't kill the soul. They can kill us, persecute us, but guess what? Heaven awaits for us. When I die, don't cry. Say, he made it. I made it to heaven. There's no tears. There's no murder. There's no crime. There's nothing but love, joy, and peace. Do I, am I in a rush to go? No. I have a family and friends and people I want to share the gospel with. But when God's ready, don't cry because I made it. Paul's saying, I know I'm going like this, but I count it joy because God has given me this ministry. What is our ministry? Whatever God called you to do. What did he call me to do? Preach and teach his word in the church, go to prison, and teach everyone I come in contact with. Who's, that's my calling. Your calling may be different, but we still have a calling. And no matter what happens in life, we have to finish what God has put in our life. So we can hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. That brings me joy to know that I was opposite of God, living a life apart from God. Now I have a relationship with him. And I know he's with me no matter what. Paul is saying, I do this. I counted my life not dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. We're going to stop right there. We'll pick up in verse number 25 next time. The reason why is because we're going to go into another section of what Paul is going to say. And I don't want to get ahead so quick. But just remember that no matter what you go through, go through it with joy because you know you're going through it with God. That brings us joy. And to the next appointed time, next Wednesday, Lord willing, We'll pick up at verse number 25 of the book of Acts. In Jesus' name, be blessed.